All right, let's talk about pericarditis. So, let's get the standard stuff out of the way. What is pericarditis? It's an inflammation of the pericardium, the sac surrounding the heart. Pretty standard stuff, okay? So, what do we see when we have a patient with pericarditis? We're going to see some ECG findings, which we're going to go over more in depth here in just a minute. They're usually tachycardic. They'll have pleuritic chest pain, which means every time they take a deep breath, the pain is worse, okay? The pain is usually sharp. They can have a fever if it's infectious, pericarditis. And then also fatigue and malaise are one kind of overlooked or forgotten symptom. All right, people usually don't feel too great when they're having this stuff going on. So what causes pericarditis? You can find it in patients who are receiving chemo or radiation therapy. There are all kinds of infections that can cause it. Trauma, surgery. One specific infection I want to talk about is, is TB. That's one where you see it uh, a little more often than not. And then there's other less common causes, okay? So what does it look like on the EKG? Well, you know, what we've been told and taught in paramedic school is not always what we're going to see. It's not always the case, right? So let's have a look at one of these EKGs. And, and you can see right here, there's elevation everywhere. Um, it's big. It's giant. It's one of those things where it just screams pericarditis, right? The kind of stuff you might see on a, an exam. Well, Let's have a look at another one, and it's the same thing. There's elevation everywhere, right? It's all over the place. This image is a bit grainy, but even so, it's still pretty obvious pericarditis is what we're looking at. But let's stop for a second. <clears throat> what is it that we see in pericarditis that's usually a bit different, okay? So one thing that most people either don't know or weren't taught is pericarditis happens in stages. Stage one is where we see the widespread ST elevation. That's only one of the four stages, okay? In stage two, the ST changes actually begin to dissipate and T waves begin to flatten out. In stage three, the T waves actually invert where it looks like that global ischemia you might have seen on, on different ECGs. And in stage four, you actually can find a normal ECG. So let's take a realistic look at a realistic stage one ECG, right? So this is someone who calls you for fatigue, malaise, maybe they had you know, recent infection or something going on, okay? And you can see the elevation, it's there, it's just barely there, but it is pretty diffuse. It's almost something you might expect to see in, in a young and athletic male or someone with BER, if you haven't watched the BER video yet. Let's take a look at the waveforms and how they manifest in the, all four stages. So stage one, obviously, you've got your ST segment uh, elevation. Stage two, everything's changing back out, and then the T wave will eventually become flat. In stage three, you'll see this sort of T wave inversion or stuff similar to it. And then in stage four, you've got a normal EKG. So how do we know it's pericarditis when we're looking at something that is, you know, not big and jumping out of us? Well, one way <clears throat> is called the knuckle sign. So the knuckle sign is a pretty, pretty simple thing you can find in AVR. And in AVR, what you'll see is that the PR interval actually dips below baseline. It dips below the isoelectric line uh, prior to this whole ST segment depression, okay? So whenever you're looking at AVR and you can see a picture on the screen, you'll see something similar to this. Um, it's not always giant and huge. So we're going to go over a couple of EKGs that show a little more. And I'm going to explain how you don't usually see this in other things, right? So let's have a look at this STEMI. So this is a beautiful inferior wall STEMI. Normal thing. You've got some elevation. you got some reciprocal depression. But what makes it different than pericarditis, because we're always comparing pericarditis to STEMIs, right? It's a STEMI imposter, is take a look at AVR. You don't see the knuckle sign there. Your PR interval and your isoelectric line are even, all right? So let's move forward to a pericarditis ECG and have a look. Do you see the knuckle sign in AVR there? Not hard to pick out, right? <clears throat> so you can pause these videos and go back and look at the ECGs a little more. This video is already long enough. But uh, a couple parting thoughts I want you to remember. Remember that a STEMI results in failure at some point. So if you're trying to decide whether or not you got a STEMI patient, remember your STEMI patients can show bradycardia. They can show rhythm changes, elevation changes. You know, they can get very irritable hearts and throw... PVCs go into bigeminy, they can display all the blocks and stuff like that. With pericarditis, apart from the ECG findings we've talked about up to this point, what you really notice is persistent tachycardia and there's not much change during the course of your transport or examination, right? Pericarditis ECG changes don't happen fast like coronary artery occlusion ECG changes do. So remember that and you should be good to go. If you have anything you want to learn, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to take care of it. Thanks, guys.